A few years ago, my wife and I took a quick trip to Singapore with our then three-year-old daughter. Anyway, unlike myself and my wife, who are more quiet and introverted, for some reason, our daughter is quite the little motor mouth. Case in point, from the moment she woke up in the wee hours of the morning through a rather traffic-riddled drive to the airport, the whole airport process of checking in and going through immigration, through a three-plus-hour flight, and our eventual arrival in Singapore, she never stopped talking. Anyway, I bring this story up to illustrate the point that if she were a Transformer, I'd imagine that that's what it would be like traveling with the Autobot Blue Streak. The Autobot Blue Streak is mostly known for one main characteristic. He's a blabbermouth. He never stops talking. He talks and talks over anything and everything under the sun. Most dismiss him as a fool who just doesn't know when to shut up, or someone who is just enamored by the sound of his own voice. But for his comrades who know him better, they know that his constant prattling is his way of dealing with the deeper pain of loss that he experienced in the past. He is haunted by the memories of the Decepticons, destroying his home city of Praxis on Cybertron at the start of the Great War. In the Dreamwave comics continuity, it is even established that Blue Streak, as the sole survivor of said destruction, was not due to anything he did, or by chance. His survival was a deliberate act by Megatron, who wanted someone to witness the destructive powers of the Decepticon forces and spread his message of terror to the rest of the planet. His fellow Autobot Hound says it best, There's some demons running loose inside that boy, and sometimes I think they grab hold of him and won't let him go. Talk is cheap, but it keeps him sane. So sometime in the 80s, my dad was constantly going on international business trips. Even if that meant that I wouldn't see him for weeks at a time, I wasn't particularly bothered by it. Especially since that when he would come home, he'd always come home bearing gifts. Anyway, on a particular trip to the US, I had only one thing in my wish list: Transformers. Which at the time were the new toys that all the kids were talking about. Even though I already had a few Diaclone robots, as far as I was concerned, they just weren't the real deal. Once I saw the Transformers cartoon, all I wanted were the official toys. And on his return, my dad definitely delivered in spades. As the familiar saying goes, you never forget your first. And when it comes to Transformers, my firsts were definitely very memorable indeed. My dad brought home three shiny new robots from that trip. The first one was the evil Decepticon leader himself, Megatron. The second one was even more mind-blowing since it was a brand new character that I had never heard of up until that point, the Autobot Air Guardian, Jetfire. And the third one was Blue Streak. Now, Blue Streak was one of the original 11 Autobot deluxe car robots released during the first year of the toy line. Being one of the 11 already put Blue Streak at a disadvantage for standing out from the rest. To add to his troubles, he wasn't even unique as he shared the same toy mold with another original 11 character, Prowl, who sported an arguably flashier police car design. Don't get me wrong though, at that point, I was happy to get any Transformer toy, but standing next to Megatron and Jetfire, it was a little harder to get just as excited over Blue Streak. He seemed more like a, a bonus throw-in, the icing on the cake. In the original cartoon, I would say that Blue Streak fell somewhere in the lower half of the character totem pole. While he definitely wasn't as heavily featured as, let's say, Jazz or Ironhide, I think he did a little better than Trailbreaker or Windcharger. To be fair though, the writers had to introduce 20 plus new characters over the course of the first season, so it was inevitable that only a few major personalities would emerge, while others would simply be relegated to one-off scenes and eventually just background characters. Possibly his most prominently featured role was in the late Season 2 episode, Trans Europe Express, where a good number of Autobot cars, including a few Season 1 characters like Wheeljack, Sunstreaker, and Sideswipe, also made surprise appearances as well. Unfortunately, most of them were basically brought back to be cannon fodder for the Stunticons. But not Blue Streak! Aside from successfully avoiding a Stunticon beatdown, Blue Streak actually ends up winning the race, making it all the way to the third act where he, along with Trax and surprise surprise, Bumblebee, successfully save the day from Menasaur and Megatron. One thing worth mentioning though was that Blue Streak was voiced by the legendary Casey Kasem. Unfortunately, even that bright spot on Blue Streak's resume would turn sour when Mr. Kasem would suddenly leave the cartoon over some negative racial issues which in turn probably sped up Blue Streak's inevitable retirement from the series. 
On the bright side though, his disappearance is definitely a better fate than what was handed to his mold mate, Prowl. In any case, despite being one of the least featured characters of the original Autobots across most Transformers media, it's Blue Streak's origin and toy that has gotten him the most attention from fans throughout the years. As confusing as it may be, the creation of his character and the production of his toy has, in my opinion, quite an interesting story. So when looking at his original toy released in 1984, any keen-eyed observer would see that despite being called Blue Streak, his original toy is predominantly silver with some red and black accents, with hardly any hints of blue at all. Adding to the confusion though was that all accompanying artwork and pictures in the box and instructions showed a definitely blue Transformer. So what gives? Well, the story starts in Japan with the pre-Transformers line from Takara, Diaclone. Now, given the premise that these pre-Transformers weren't sentient beings and basically machines that were piloted by humans, as a way, I guess, to maximize production costs, it was a pretty common practice for each toy design to be sold in multiple colors. And Blue Streak was no exception. The original Diaclone Fair Lady Z toy that would eventually become Blue Streak was released in the aforementioned blue color, as well as in silver, with a black hood and roof section which we'll get to later on. Anyway, it was the blue version of the toy that made its way to the US into the hands of the people at Hasbro who made the Transformers toys and Marvel who made the accompanying comic book. It was then Marvel comic book writer Bob Bodiansky who saw said blue car robot and decided to naturally call it Blue Streak. He then proceeded to give him the characteristic of being a motor mouth which would further match his name as a double pun that was a reference to the phrase to talk a blue streak an American English idiom that means talking a lot. With all that established though, somewhere towards the latter part of the toys production, with artwork and promotional toy photography already shot, someone at Hasbro inexplicably made the call to do a last minute switch up to the toy Blue Streak's color into the predominantly silver one that eventually made it into retail stores, which ultimately led to the myth of the original Blue Blue Streak. Back then, many assumed that the silver blue streak that kids got was actually a later running production change and that a few original blues are still out there somewhere costing a fortune. The truth though is that Hasbro never released one and the blue toy in the instructions and catalog were really just the old Diaclone version of the toy. And even the blue blue streak artwork on the box was directly lifted off the original Diaclone packaging. But it doesn't stop there. Remember that second Diaclone color variation? In what can only be explained as the toy gods effing around, that color palette was used as the basis for Blue Streak's animation model for the original cartoon series as well as its look in the Marvel comics. So not only did you have a silver Blue Streak toy that didn't look like the artwork it came with, he even looked different from the cartoon and comics. Poor guy. Anyway, as if the different color decos weren't confusing enough, Things got even messier when multiple names came into the picture. First in 2002, when Takara would do a reissue of the original toy but this time based on the animation accurate silver and black deco and under the Japanese name of Blue Streak where he was simply known as Streak. Then in 2003 when Hasbro produced another vintage toy reissue, this time based on their original silver deco as a Toys R Us exclusive. At this point, Hasbro had actually lost the rights to the name Blue Streak to another toy company. So I guess, given no choice, they took this opportunity to logically rename him as Silver Streak, which to be fair, made more sense. Then came the Alternators toy line in the US, where Silver Streak was one of the very first releases. As per his name, he was now a Silver Street model Subaru Impreza. And just to keep things interesting, the Japanese version of this line called Vinyl Tech released the same toy with more die-cast under their name of Streak and then a blue version years later called, well, Blue Streak. But back in the US where they still didn't own the trademark of Blue Streak, Silver Streak remained the norm as with one of his more popular toy releases in the 2008 Classics line. Interestingly though, at this point, Hasbro had mostly ditched the completely silver deco for the animation accurate silver and black. Which, to be fair, is how I always saw him. Sumi, I'm a Toon guy. Frenzy is red, and Rumble is blue. Anyway, finally in 2009, Hasbro regained the trademark rights to the name of Blue Streak, and everything was right in the world again. I mean, while Silver Streak was more accurate to his deco, it just didn't have the same ring to it as Blue Streak, in my opinion. 
But just when you thought that things were finally back to normal as possible, enter Takara to keep the confusion going with the ultimate version of Blue Streak for their masterpiece line in 2013, sporting his black and silver deco and unsurprisingly called Streak, which to be fair they had been pretty consistent with. But then the following year, they released a silver version called, well, Silver Streak. And then the year after that, a blue one called Blue Streak. Now I know that they were just trying to cover all their bases and satisfy as many fans out there who were particular to specific decos. But come on! Really? To their credit though, Hasbro has since stuck to their guns and remained pretty consistent on this one with their MP release as well, as later toys sporting the animation colors and the name Blue Streak. Aside from the Masterpiece version, we got the Siege, War for Cybertron, and Earthrise Blue Streaks, both decoed in black and silver. And that honestly should have been the end of it. Except, of course it wasn't. Just to make sure us fans wouldn't get too comfortable, in 2022, the blue decoed Blue Streak made a surprising return to US retail. Except, he wasn't called Blue Streak. Silver Streak was released in the buzzworthy Bumblebee line as a recolor of the Earthrise smokescreen toy, sporting the classic blue Diaclone deco. Oh well. So now I guess the best way to spin this is that despite their shared history, it appears that Hasbro is making an honest attempt into making Silver Streak his own thing, his own unique character, that in turn would be another toy for completists like myself to buy. You know how it goes, easy repaint, easy money. And so with the silver and black deco as Blue Streak, and the blue deco as Silver Streak, where does that leave the predominantly silver deco of the original toy? Well, that version has seemingly and thankfully gone the way of the dodo. But if for some insane reason either Hasbro or Takara decide to bring that back, oh what the hell, let's just call that one Streak. Anyway, I think I've talked enough about the Autobot Motormouth who could essentially talk up a Blue Streak. Despite the very confusing story behind his toys and the fact that he was more of a periphery character at best in the cartoon and comics, and he was basically outshined by both Megatron and Jetfire, Blue Streak was still one of my very first Transformer toys, and for that reason alone, he will always have a special place in my collection. So are there any other fans of Blue Streak out there? What is your preferred deco of this guy? Is it silver? Black and silver? Or blue? Or how about green? And more importantly, is this dress blue and black or white and gold? Let me know in the comments below and tell me your story. Thanks for watching Stories from the Toy Shelf. If you enjoyed this story, why not check another one? And please help me out by giving me a like or comment and subscribe to the channel to get notifications whenever I upload a new story. Until the next one.